Hi all, this video will be uh, checking the answers of the homework that is chapter 4 lesson 5 which was about triangle congruence using SSS and SAS. Now compared to the classwork questions we did, uh, the homework questions are much more simpler only that if you did not, if you think you can't understand means you did not look at the question, you did not read the question well and neither did you revise your lessons. So if you have not done any of this, Please go do that and then come and do the homework, then check your answers. Okay, so let's start with the first four questions. They are saying, write which of the SSS or SAS postulates if either can be used to prove the triangles are congruent. So they have given you some figures here. You need to say whether we can use SSS, that's side, 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 or side angle, side postulate, if either any one or none can be used to prove the triangles are congruent. If no triangles can be proved congruent, write neither. Now definitely in your mind it might be going on, you want to write neither everywhere, but that's, they did not give you a choice for that, right? So let's see whether where can we use SAS and where can we use SSS or is it that we cannot use either of them anywhere? All right, let's start with question number one, this one. Here, as you can see, now before I move on, first let me quickly, briefly explain what's this. If in one triangle, if three sides are given, and in another triangle, if all the three sides are equal, that means we can use SSS to prove that both triangles are equal. I'm repeating again, if in any triangles, three sides are equal to the three sides of another triangle, that means we can use SSS to prove that triangles are equal, both the triangles are congruent. Now, what is SAS? If in any triangle, two sides and the included angle is given. Now, this word included angle is very important. Let me show you what an included angle is. In a, in a triangle, the included angle, there's one side of the triangle, right? Included angle means if you're talking about these three sides of the triangle, okay? Included angle is AB, the included angle of AB and BC is angle B. If I write it in words like this, AB and BC, which is the common letter in both the uh, segments B. So which means angle B is the included angle for AB and BC because this uses the angle which is included which means if you're talking about two sides the angle between the two sides is this angle. So we can say SAS is both the sides and the included angle. Now keeping this in mind let's try this. They said this side is equal to this side. Okay, and they said this angle is equal to this angle, right? So now we have one angle and one side. Now, by our common sense, we can say that this is also equal to each other. You have learned that about the reflective property, right? So now we can say this side, that is this side is equal to this, and this angle is equal to this, and this is equal to each other. But can I say I can use SSS to determine that both the triangles are equal? No, because for SSS, I need all the three sides. They did not give us this side is equal to this. They did not give us that. So we cannot, we rule out SSS. We cannot use SSS for this. What about SAS? Can I use SAS? Now I have two sides. Yes, I have this side and this side. That's two sides and an angle. But for SAS, I need an included angle. So included angle means if I'm talking about this side and this side, which is the included angle, this becomes the included angle because the angle which joins both the lines. And if I'm talking about this side and this side, the included angle becomes this angle, which they did not give us. They did not give us the measure of this or this. So we have nothing to do with this two because they are like on different sides, right? So because of that, we say we cannot either have SSS or we can neither use SSS. So we say we can use neither of them. This is how you have to determine which um, postulate you are going to use. But this question, the information they gave us is not enough at all. Rather in the classwork, they even said explain, but at least thank God here they're not saying explain. They just want you to identify, that's all. Okay, so this is how you have to study the triangles. 
fine let's see here now here they said this is three this side is three as well this side is three this side is three as well so they have given us two sides now which means they did not tell us that we can use SSS because for SSS, we need to determine the other side is also equal because all three sides should be equal. But here they did not tell us that. So let's try SAS. So according to SAS, we have two, uh, two of the lens. Now make sure that they have the included angle. So did they give us the measure of the included angle? Yes, they did. See, they, they talked about this length and they talked about this length and they included the angle. So here also, see, they talked about this line and this line second line. So the included angle is this. Also, they said both the included angles are equal. So which postulate are we going to use? We are going to use SAS. As we cannot use SSS, no way, because uh, they did not give us the length of the third side, so we cannot use that, but we can use SAS. Moving to question number three, study the figure carefully before you answer the question. This says it is this side is congruent to the side and this side is congruent to the side. Now, again, they did not give us this. They did not give. So until they give, we cannot determine that they both are equal. So we leave it alone and they did not give us the information. So they gave us two sides. Now what is remaining? Definitely we cannot use SSS because there is the third side congruence is missing. Now can we use SAS? Let's try. They gave us two sides, right? That will determine two sides are equal. Now what about the angle for the SAS postulate? So SAS which means the included angle should be this. Did they give you any of the included angles? They did not give you any. They gave you the vertical angles, which we cannot do anything because SAS says the included angle should be equal. So here also we have no enough information. So we write, we cannot use any of them. So let's move to question number four. Now here again, they said this is seven. So one of the corresponding side is seven. Then they said this is four, which means this is equal to this. And this is six, which means this is equal to this. So which means which postulate are we going to choose? They have given us all the three sides and with equal congruent sides. So we could say this is SSS. So we will use SSS rather than just giving like this, giving the if when the, if they give the numbers, that's more easier. We can simply find out, but it takes a bit of time to understand figures in this way. Okay, if you want, you can put your own numbers and find out. That's that depends on you on your ability. Okay, question number five: Find the value of x so that the triangles are congruent. So they said the triangles are congruent. They have already given us that the triangles are congruent. Congruent means now they are equal to each other. Every side is equal to each side. So this side is equal to this side. This is naturally equal. So this becomes equal to this side. They said congruent. That's why we are defining it like that. Okay. So I can say 20x is equal to 22x minus 3.6. That means 22x will move to that side. That will leave it with negative 2x equals negative 3.6. Negatives gets cancelled. x is going to be equal to 3.6 divided by 2, which means x is equal to 1.8. They just want you to find the values of x only. So x is 1.8. Simple as that. It's easy, see? It's more, I told, it's more easier than the questions you solved as classwork. So the triangles are congruent. Congruent means every side is equal, every side and every angle is equal to each other. Let's move to question number six. Now this is related to um, angles. So they already said, see, this side is equal to this side. This side is equal to this side. So the included angles are equal. These are included angles. You need to, it needs to click in your mind very fast when you, they are talking about these two sides means these two are the included angles. So that means they have used SAS here, right? So I could say 6x minus 27 degrees 
equals 4x plus x plus 7 degrees, which means we need to solve. That will give you 2x equals 34. x is going to be 34 divided by 2, which is going to be x is equal to 17. So the value of x for this question is 17. Now here I did not solve all the steps of equation because all of you know what to do. Move the 4 to that side, that will become minus 4. Move the 27 to this side, that will become plus. So 7 plus 7 is 34. 6 minus 6x minus 4x will give us 2x. So we are left with 34 divided by 2, that's 70. Simple. Right. Now that questions 5 and 6 were simple, let's move to question number 7. Okay, this is all not neat. I mean, if you want, you can read, okay? The Hatfield and McCoy families are feuding over some land. Feuding means they're fighting over some land. Neither family will be satisfied unless the two triangular fields are exactly the same size. You know that C is the midpoint. So here is the first proof. C is the midpoint. Write a two column proof that will settle the dispute. So you have to draw a two column proof. Now to draw a two column proof, you know that you need to have quite a long kind of table. Divide them. Just let me only divide this part. And we divide this again into this way. So here, this is going to be your statement. This is going to be the statement. And this side, you're going to write the reason. Okay. So let's start by first judging the information they have given us. Okay. Given C is the midpoint of AD, and BE. Now you know what a midpoint does. A midpoint, same like bisecting the angles, it also divides the segment in two equal parts. So already they said C is the midpoint of AD and BE. So of segment AD and BE, what, which means naturally A is equal, this part of the line is equal to this part and this part of the last segment is equal to this part. Right? When, okay, let me put this in picture for you. This is line BE. Just imagine this is line BE. Okay, B and E. There's a midpoint. Midpoint means the point which is exactly in between. Now, what does this do? This means, for example, if the length of this line is four centimeters, now once the midpoint is there, what, uh, let me name the midpoint as C. What does this midpoint, have, what will the midpoint do? It will divide the line in two parts. That means this part is two centimeter and this part is two centimeter, right? So I could say BC is equal to CE. This is the first thing I need to find out. So BC is equal to CE, okay? Similarly, if, see my dear students, I'm trying my best to put the questions as the way you could understand. I'm trying my best. So it's you who have to understand also. So this I can say is A and C. Uh, sorry, it is A and D. Okay, this is line AD. Here yeah, this line. I'm drawing this line. Again, there is a midpoint C, right? This is midpoint C, which means AC is equal to CD. For example, if this was, um, let me say, two centimeters, what did the midpoint do? It divided it equally in two parts. So I could say AC is one and CD is one. So from this, I can derive that AC is equal to DC. In fact, here also it should be BC equals EC because we have to follow the same order, right? So it's the same meaning, but because we started with BC, so we need to start this side with E, that's all, EC. 
okay so these are the things we are going to solve here and prove that both the triangles are equal so first start by writing the information which is given so the first statement is going to be c is the midpoint of ad and be why why did we say c is the midpoint of ad and be because it's given the information is given for us now from the given information we have to see what is the result of that so because of this midpoint just now i explained how what has happened because of the midpoint we could say that ac is equal to dc right so let's write ac equals dc and also what else is equal i can also say bc is equal to ec bc equals to ec now what's the reason why did we say that bc equals cec and ac equals bc because of the definition of midpoint that's what the definition of midpoint say that a midpoint divides a, a segment in two equal parts so definition of midpoint fine now from this it, in fact our proof is like interlinked because of this this resulted now because of this what can we say we can put them in proper forms right because ac is equal to dc i can say ac is congruent to dc it's, it's you could understand it means it's the same meaning right also we can say bc is congruent to ec now why did we say this what's the reason we are going to give because of the definition of congruent segments what is this definition of congruent segments means they both are equal what does the definition of congruent segments say congruent segments say that two parts of the lines are equal that's all here we are here, here we use the definition of midpoint because this is related to midpoint okay now why did we use this part because equal means what congruence so from this we derived this part because of the definition of congruent segments right now that we have two sides we already proved that two sides are equal now what is another thing we can find out from this picture we don't have this they did not give us that this is equal to this so we leave out that so we cannot use use sss here but rather we could say that these two angles are equal as you know, you have already studied vertical opposite angles are equal. So this angle and this angle are vertically opposite angles. So if this two of them are same, both of them are C, okay? But I cannot write here C equals C because anyone will be confused what C equals C. So to avoid the confusion, I need to name this angle. I mean, I need to name this angle depending on the length, the segments. So the first thing instead of saying no i'm referring to this angle i could read this angle also as angle bca is congruent to angle dce dce i'm referring to the same angle on both the sides but instead of saying angle c equals angle c i'm naming it in a proper way by saying angle b C A is equal to angle D C A. Why did we say this? Because of the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles theorem. So now that we have two sides and one angle proved, so we could say triangle A B C is congruent to triangle D E C. Now, which is the theorem or postulate which we used? We used the postulate SAS because we proved that two sides and one angles are, one angle is same. So we could say angle triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC because of the side angle side postulate. 
So this is how you need to prove by write, drawing the proof tree, by writing it the two column proof. And that is how to derive the information from the figure given. I hope, I'm sure you must have understood question one to six, but question seven only comes with practice. Take more questions, practice by yourself, write. And if you want, you can confirm with me if the answer is right or not. So keep practicing till we meet again in the next lesson.